so so when I look at the theater and the the, the movie going experience, and that is what we've all had for so long, the sadness for me is that maybe we won't have that ritual of going to the movie theater and that's what we do with our kids like every Friday and we go see the new movie and we feel that collective experience. But then there's that other part of me that's like, yeah, but what is the new experience? And that's where we have to, I think we need to look towards that or how do we create, you know, how do we do this together in a different way? Have you ever been tempted by a Marvel or a big, I would, yeah, if it, I mean, if it was right, mm -hmm. I would love it, I think. I actually think I'd have a lot of fun doing a Marvel. My brother is Captain Agent um, and has been doing it. And I remember Wyatt calling me going, oh, you gotta, you gotta do a Marvel, you know? And I think I'd be open to it, for sure. You know, why not? Why not? Yeah, why um, not? The, the, the Marvel films are a good example of this, actually. There, there are films which get huge box office, like, Bride Wars. There are films which get amazing critics' responses, and there are films that get awards. And it's really rare that you get something that hits all of them. This one made a fortune, but it didn't. All you know, people aren't always kind about these kind of films. No, they're not. Does that bother? They're not usually unkind about you, but they're <sighs> often unkind about the films. Yeah. Like, does that bother you? How do you cope with that? I don't know. I mean, I, I look. I, I grew up watching. The industry, and I, I, I knew, I know that going in. Like, I mean, it's an interesting thing when you do them and you love them, and you see how people respond to them. That they're not as critically, um, sort of, hugged as other films. But you know, then there are the you know there, there's little things that creep through, and some people kind of really do honor how good it is for that kind of movie. Mm -hmm. um, I personally, as someone who loves movies like this and and loves actors that are like comedic actors and people who know how to walk the line, I think it's the hardest thing in the world to do and that's why there's not that many that do it. And I think there's like a secret language that we have or that we kind of, like we feel good about it with each other. Mm -hmm. and. And we know that, it's like a wink, you know? We, we got our little group and, and, you know, we might not get the nods, um, but we got a lot of other great things that come with that, right? And then to me, I mean, I look at this like, it's also, a lot of it's not in your hands. I mean, when you're a hired gun, it's like, you're really in the hands of the filmmaker and the, I mean, Bride Wars is different. I produced it and like, you know, wanted to like push, push that in the best way that I could. But at the end of the day, it's really in the hands of the people you're working with, the director, the studio, the editor, and you can fight all you want, scream all you want, but it's not gonna be your call at the end of the day. And so what your hope was going into it doesn't always end up being the, the finished product. Mm -hmm. um, and so in that, in that mindset for me, I just, I just wanna do the best work I can I want to work with great filmmakers, hope that I bring their vision to life, and then I go home and I just pray that they put a good movie together, you know, and, and sometimes they do, and sometimes, ah. <laughs> You're like, well, I don't know if I would have taken that, I would have not, maybe not the best take, um, <laughs> you know, uh, but, yeah. So, Mona Lisa and Glass Onion you made back to back, both of, or more or less, close, 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 yeah. close enough. Mo, 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 both of them really benefit from a massive big screen experience, I think. Do you, I mean, what do you think about that? Do you feel confident that people are coming back? Oh, I wanna believe, I mean, I, I, I go half glass full, um, but I think there's also, I think it's also really important to move forward mm -hmm. and as sad as it is, I had I had this really weird moment at Glastonbury this year, sober, um, <laughs> and I and I I got so emotional after watching Paul McCartney. Um, maybe it's because he's sort of the same age as my mom, and um, it just defines this time, a sort of innocence mm -hmm. of like iconic. The, that, that, the, the, you know, the Beatles and how iconic and, and just 
earth shattering they were. They just changed the face of rock and roll and they believed in something. Mm -hmm. So they were so, they were so, uh, and the same with that generation, right? And I, I started to get really kind of emotional about how different it is now and like, and art and what, it, what is art? What, what does it mean now? Like, and I, and, and it hit me that at the end of the day, and this is what made me so emotional, it's like we just have to keep making art, like good art, and believe in the things that we're putting out there and take risks and not always make people happy and say things that piss people off sometimes. And maybe we need more of that. And that's what happened to me this year at Glastonbury. <laughs> I was like, I want to piss people off. Um, no, I don't. I really don't. It's not my personality. But, um, but, 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 you, so, so when I look at the theater and the, the, the movie going experience, and that is what we've all had for so long, the sadness for me is that maybe we won't have that ritual of going to the movie theater and that's what we do with our kids like every Friday and we go see the new movie and we feel that collective experience. But then there's that other part of me that's like, yeah, but what is the new experience? And that's where we have to, I think we need to look towards that or how do we create, you know, how do we do this together in a different way? And so I like, I like trying to move forward um, instead of trying to save something and stay because nothing, everything changes, well, right? Glass Onion is a perfect example of that because obviously it's the biggest Netflix release and is going to be on our screens forever. So, yeah, uh, and, and maybe we, we just witnessed like the first what can start happening now with movies, the theater, and streamers, and I hope that, you know, movies that are with streamers get longer, mm -hmm. full theatrical runs, uh, and can see the benefit of that.